Hey! Before we begin the video, I just wanted to quickly say I have been surviving almost entirely off Patreon and YouTube at the moment. So if you're able to join in, uh, please go check out the Patreon. It's in the link in the bottom there. And the current patrons are written here on the board. Thank you, Tubby, for that. Uh, also, subscribe, 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 as usual. And when the... I am planning on doing a crowdfund for this actual project as well, although looking for other me funding methods as well. So when that's up, I'll be showcasing it and I'll, I'll explain that and I'll, I'll talk about that as well when it's done. Uh, that's all for this. And let's get onto the video. Let's go! You can you can stop now. We're done. It's me, Nimso. Welcome back to another VR video. Today we are back in Project TX. Uh, this video is going to be the interactions video part two. Uh, two. Um, last week. Uh, well, actually, last video. It wasn't really last week. Last video, I was talking about a lot of the interaction systems that I had in the game, and um, yes, I am being a little bit quieter today because I still haven't figured out what is wrong with all of my audio being overly boosted and over amplified. My microphone is 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 really messing up as well. My Oculus Rift CV1's microphone is is being boosted for some reason, so the audio is just hitting those uh, those those uh, very very extreme thresholds and you're, you're getting a lot of quality degra degradation this is not how the cv1 usually sounds right i've got previous videos on this channel where the audio does not sound this bad uh, now today's video is about guns and other types of interactions that we weren't dealing with last week mainly because uh, last week was kind of talking about the overall systems like the attachment system and all of that good stuff and this one is more using those systems which does also mean that there is not as much polish in this stuff as there was in the last uh, video and the stuff with that before we begin i just want to show you something that i was going to show you in the last video yes it's a <laughs> this is a really fun thing i'll take a bo bouncy ball Whoop. 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 And it get back here. <laughs> it's this, it's this, it's this pipe over here. And just, just for fun, just for fun, right? Just for testing. We've got a, <laughs> we've got a Mario pipe. <laughs> because of course, right? Just some form of transportation. I absolutely just love having little random physics things in my games. But there you go. Yeah, you've got a nice transport pipe. Uh, but there we go. Woo! Hey all. So yeah, you can just press the button and you get transported up. Uh, but there we go, some ridiculous stuff. Uh, there is also some uh, removal zones, but I'll show you one down there. There's one over that side. Um, that side over here. Uh, no, I don't want to take a, a, a ball, but there we go. Look, if we take one of these explosive guns, plonk it here, and one, two, three, kaboosh, it's gone. Wonderful. Beautiful. Right, there we go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I wasn't able to actually push his sword out of the way. Um, but there we go. Right. Beautiful. Right. Let's have a look at this stuff here. Uh, I have made a mistake and not corrected the things here. Uh, let's talk about a bit about the attachment zone system. Uh, well, actually, we'll look at guns first. So switch over to my camera. Thank you. And uh, here we have guns, of course. Uh, we've got a few just test guns. We've got some, none of these models are mine. I haven't done any custom work. I need to do some custom work. They've, there's performance issues right now, um, but there we go, right? Um, you get all the, the usual stuff. So we've got the, the nice sort of Mac 11 Uzis. We've got a little toy version of that. Uh, we've got the toy versions of the 1911s. We've got the 1911s themselves and a long slide version of that too. And then the Glock names uh, will be replaced of course uh, in reality um the thing with guns is they are a little bit overly mechanical in comparison to basic sort of grab grab stuff and that means that their interactions are going to be a little bit more complicated and it won't be as polished as i mentioned just now um one of the things that i was going to f i felt that i would probably have trouble with though is is the actual like physics of them right so outside of the view for now we'll look at that in a moment but the actual physics of them having an outstretched hand actually you know recoil about right i'll talk about the recoil actually it is uh, it's not set 
it's not a set value, which is really cool. Uh, what's happening is it takes the distance from the from the actual section where the bullet will start accelerating, and it performs a calculation up to the end where the muzzle is, and it bases that on the actual uh, the mass of the the mass of the bullet, and it applies a force in accordance with how much that acceleration would have happened, right? Um, but it did end up with a pretty good result on uh, and you can see because of structure of course as i mentioned before the hand gets thrown back in ways that you're not used to uh with with guns right uh, with the guns in other games maybe right now let's talk a little bit about the magazines and everything so there's the usual mechanics of you grab a magazine you slap it in and uh you can just click to actually make it you can see the pauses aren't done at all so ignore all the hand finger pauses that's all just the basic stuff. It's the same thing that you'd get when grabbing anything else. Like that's the exact same pose right now. I can't believe I just knocked them all over. Hey, stand up. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Right, um, but there we go, right? The cool thing with this is that it is actually a physical slide system, right? My voice is jumping around a little bit today. Um, but there we go, right? So this is an actual physical slide and you can see here that the bullet, the, the bullet, the magazine, doesn't just slap in right so you can actually place it right there and slide it slowly in right and you can see there's a number there that the count of the bullets so it's really cool because you can you can actually check your bullet count just like that i'll probably change the visuals and everything and right now they're kind of going through things as well uh usually the the actual renderer for for fonts like this the text mesh pro usually doesn't have this problem only the default unity fonts have this problem uh, text mesh has this problem but uh, it, it has the problem i don't know why that's what we get now there is actually more of a problem with putting magazines in there and this is where things get a little bit complicated right if you were to slap the magazine right in right you would get this right and that's a problem because when 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 you actually get to that point you can't move the hand any further because it'll collide, right? It'll it'll collide here. In fact, even in reality, I can't move my hand any further than that, which is a problem. So what I have is what you would actually do in reality, if you imagine right now, if you're trying to put a magazine into, let where, where's the actual camera? If you're trying to put a magazine into there, what you would do is you'd slide it in and then you'd actually push it with your fingers, right? You would push it like so and just slide it in, right? And that's exactly what happens here. So as you're pushing it in, the actual position as you hold it here rotates. And you can see the finger poses don't do anything, but that's what actually happens here. And you can see it's a slide, right? So if I, if I actually <laughs> just fell through that, oh dear, oh dear. It just fell through the ground because of course I don't have any of these collisions set up perfectly. Um, I need to put some solid ground underneath this. This is not volumetric. This is all just part of the land mesh. Um, but there we go. Mistakes happen every time. Um, but yeah, so that's an actual slide, physical slide. There we go. And you can see it, it's just positioned nice and smoothly. <laughs> it's very smooth as well. But there we go. You actually get the ability to rotate the hand. And if I, if I was to actually have the finger poses look good, it would look good, right? And that happens on any magazine, right? So there we go. You can, uh, you can for example, use these. And they're not supposed to be 100. They're about 9. Um, but there we go. You put it in and you can see your hand slides in position. And, and that's not me doing the work there. That is the actual grab pose rotating as well. So here we go. I'll keep my hand straight in reality and you'll see it forcefully rotates the hand as well because you kind of have to, to be able to actually push it in. Uh, what you would do is actually push it with your fingers like so, right? In reality, that's just what you would have to do. There's no way you can just do this and, and kind of drop it in like that. Um, and of course that happens on other guns as well. So even something like, and again, I dominoed them, even something like this, I do need to put some work in for something like this because there's no need to do it on this, right? So there we go, it rotated, which is, which is a real, a really annoying. Um, but there you go, yeah, you can actually slap it around and you can knock them out quite easily. Now you'll notice here that there's a bunch of them just sitting on the table and they can kind of balance like that. It's really, really cool because you can just slap, oop, slap them in like that really really nice to be able to do that um but the slide right so the slide you can grab it and you can see that there's a little bit of a problem here with the pausing of it where it actually resets itself like so 
Um, but that's uh, something I can fix. And you can see that the slide is, is, is grabbable. And that's actually a physical grab on the gun, right? So again, no finger pauses working right. And you can rotate the gun within your hand. But, uh, but there you go. It's an actual physical grab in the hand. And it looks gr gr great. And there we go. You can rotate your hand. You can grab the gun like so, right? So you can just grab it like so, like that. There you go. Did I have a magazine in? Oh, I didn't know I had a magazine in. There we go, right? And you can see it, it, it's a little bit broken, but there we go, right? So you can slap it in and do that. But you can, of course, grab it in another um, handle, in another direction as well. So there we go, right? And you can do that. And, and that works because it's actually a physical grab. You can do that at any point, right? So there we go. You can do that here and do that. And that's really cool because if you were to get a magazine out, this is, that's not, oh, it is, it is one of these, right? So you take that, you get your magazine out, you slap it in, and then you grab this, slap that, and there you go. <laughs> it's beautiful, which is even better when you don't use the other hand at all. So you, you stand it, stand it. You can see they fall through the hand when you release objects. I need to work on that. Um, but there we go, one hand, right? One hand, click, snap, flip, fire. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love it, right? And there are bullets coming out when you, there we go, it is, yeah, it is working properly. Uh, but there you go. Now, how do you get ammo out of your pocket? Because obviously you press a button to actually store things in your pockets. Let's swap to that, uh, to that camera there. We'll, uh, we'll put a magazine in this one. So there we go, we've got guns and then we put one thing in our pocket we put another thing in our pocket. Oop, I accidentally pull grab that. Um, so how do we then get get ammo out? Well, we can just it, it takes whatever whatever gun you've got in your in your other hand. Uh, currently, it's it's not really done correctly. So again, a little bit of work to do there. And by using the other button instead of your primary button, which will take out your gun, instead you can <laughs> hover grabbing everything. A little bit of work to be done. But instead, you use the other button, the secondary button on the controller, and now you grab out a magazine. Perfect. Right? Oh, oh whoops. Wrong magazine. There we go. Right? And there you go. It's, it's beautiful. It works perfectly, right? So if I want to take out two guns, I can take out two guns. Otherwise, I can take out a magazine, which is, of course, the wrong type of magazine because I last grabbed that gun. So there we go. Yeah. So beautiful, right? absolutely beautiful <laughs> it's, it's beautiful and there we go right but there's something even cooler than that right which is actually this other pocket the other pocket doesn't have magazines and i can i can control this i can probably set this up later on down the line you can see today's video is a little bit simpler it's a little bit straightforward we've got some cool things going on around us but uh there's more cool things coming from this machine here um but there we go right um, there's something cool in the other pocket and the other pocket contains grenades, right? So this is where things get a little bit unusual uh, in comparison to what you would normally see in, in a VR game, right? Oh. oh, it missed. I thought that ladder would hit the boxes, but there we go, right? In comparison to what you would normally see in a VR game. Normally, you've got all these physical points and you're kind of trying to match move everything exactly. But this time, I've got grenades in one pocket and uh, I've got magazines in the other. And you can see they do hit the end part a little bit there. I need to work a little bit on the actual joint limits, but it should be fine. It's it's fine. Don't worry about that. We've got work to do. I'll get it done, right? But why is this really cool? Well, it's really cool because you can then dual wield, right? And you want to see this in my camera view, right? So you're there dual wielding, you're dual wielding, you're dual wielding. You need to get some ammo out. You grab it from your other hand, right? And then you can carry on. Or of course you can just, you can just uh, plonk that in your pocket and then take out the magazine and throw that into there and then carry on dual wielding. Or with the other hand, you can put your gun away, grab a, a, a grenade, throw that, and then carry on, right? Even if you're single hand wielding, right? It's really, really cool because you're there, you fire, 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 you throw a grenade, and then you just carry on, right? 
and you know exactly what game I'm kind of replicating the mechanics of, right? It's really, really nice. So you've got the gun there, you fire, 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 you throw a grenade and you just carry on. And you can technically fire at that grenade, right? You can actually blow the grenade up while it's midair as well. So you could try, if you roll that, I haven't actually lit the grenade, but you can just fire it and it, and it explodes. Here is the sphere. This is just one thing, I'll, I'll cut into the guns for now, right? This is the sphere, oh, oh, I do have a, a pistol in the other hand. Uh, this thing is really cool, right? I really like this, we're gonna zoom you out. This is really nice, it's got an entrance way here, and it's just, it's, this is the bubble, right? It's just one of those floaty floaty bubbles that you've seen before. It, it rolls around, right? Um, it rolls, I don't want to lose the hole here. So yeah, it rolls around, and uh, you can enter it, right? So you can go through this this section here. Let's, uh, yeah, there we go. And now within this bubble, I can run around. But it's really cool because this is using my new buoyancy system. Now my old buoyancy system uh, used the usual, the usual stuff, wherein uh, it depends on the weight of the object um, as to how much force, whoo, yeah as to how much force applies to the object that goes in the water. So um, let's say, what have we got here that's floaty? You, uh, these guys are floaty. In fact, those barrels are floaty as well. Ooh, are they floaty? Yes, so they're floaty. Now the problem with the regular buoyancy system is you try and float an object by applying upwards force. And the problem with that is, if you've got a very light object, let's say it's uh, it's one kilogram, just one kilogram, then the amount of force you apply going upwards to keep the object afloat is one times the gravity acceleration, right? To, to cut out gravity, which is only 9.81 newtons. The problem with that is one kilogram is not going to then float when anything heavier than that is attached to it. So for example, if I was, if I was hanging off the, the ball, it would just sink, right? You can see it's sinking. Technically, I should be able to float with the ball. Now, this is my regular buoyancy system. But what's really, really cool here is that that box over there, this box is actually lighter than that ball. And as you can see, I can climb on top of it and it just floats, right? So it... Yeah. There we go. It's just floating on the water, right? Despite the fact that it's actually just as light as that ball that we just looked at. Why is that? Is it applying more force? No, it's a new system that I've been working on for buoyancy that allows even the lightest of objects, I can make it one kilogram and it would still, it would still float just like that. And that's what's been applied to the new, to the ball over there. Oh. Yeah, come on, there we go. Yeah, a little bit of weakness there. I need to control my uh, my forces a little better. Uh, but there we go. So that's what's applied to this ball, right? So this is using the new buoyancy system. I haven't applied it to all the objects, only those green boxes over there. And uh, as such, yeah, yeah, there we go. As such, we can get this ball onto the water. And there we go. <laughs> it's really cool. Uh, this is using the new buoyancy system, which means not only do I have it going completely deep into the water before it can even apply the forces, but it can apply the forces completely even on the surface of the water. I'm falling through the hole. Oi, oi, come back here. <laughs> come back, come back here. Oh, get back in there. There we go, there we go, right. Yeah, it can apply the forces even with a very, very small amount of depth into the water. And you don't get any bounciness, you don't get the awkwardness. You can see this in like some of my very early videos where I tried to do a buoyancy system. And because something like um, a rowboat is only 30 kilograms, and my player currently is about 70 kilograms, um, you end up with the boat itself by itself. Either the boat floats naturally, and then you sink if you jump on top of it, or the boat bounces around when it's not uh, being pushed down by something heavy. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. It solves that problem, and of course, I'm falling down the hole. 
which I should probably just fall down now because we've had enough fun in the water. Let's get back to guns. There is a, a bit of a problem with the actual attachment system currently because the objects that are attached to my body do not get um, do not get detected by buoyancy systems. So if they're too heavy, like the hammers, um, they then cause me to to sink. I can't actually swim while attached, even though I can when I'm when I, the object is out. Uh, speaking of attachments, so as you know, you can put attachments on these uh, these attachment points, but these are physical points, right? So these are actually just separated from the actual player's holster systems. This is not an inventory. This is just a set of attachment points currently. There's going to be some connection with inventory later. Uh, inventory, I don't know how you want to say it, however you want to say it. But the cool thing with that is you can then attach it to other things, right? So there we go. These points are not set up correctly. Um, but there you go. You can see that the uh, attachment points work on other objects as well right and that's actually weighed this thing down as well so if i move this over to here oh no my uh, my measuring scale is over here so you can see if i take the guns off there we go and then you look at this you can see it's a 10 kg barrel right that's 10 kilograms perfectly fine and then we put it over here there's your oops stop moving there's your 10 kg. You put this thing on there and you can see 11 kg, right? So that's actually weighed the object down and it's weighed it down there. Not just all together, but it's weighed it down at that position. It's really, really cool because it means I can actually build objects now that are acting like containers. So we've got here, we've got this, uh, this, this suitcase over here, which of course looks very, very similar to something you would find in another game, which is where you wear a nice, uh, you know, dress suit and you go around and you can switch to different costumes throughout the world and your target is a human being, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's got that nice style. I did some nice texturing on my own little custom suitcase, but there we go. We can open, we can, uh, we can open, uh, there we go. We can open that and there are some attachment points in here and you can see here, container, big container, and container big is actually a big attachment point and we can see that with something like a large weapon so what you can do is you can attach them there and then yeah, flip that closed and now i've got a suitcase that i can transport around flip that open and there we go we've got gun access right there absolutely beautiful it is beautiful and it's really cool because it means that i can then store more weapons on my body i can then store weapons on my body like so like that right you can just put put weapons on the attachment points that you do have and uh and then you just carry on and you've got extra guns in here or extra objects or whatever you want to store right <laughs> unusual business but there we go now it's really cool because yeah, because we can also put larger larger guns in there as well so yeah, there we go you plonk that in there. Yeah, they're, they're not positioned perfectly, but uh, we can solve that later. Uh, and now you can see that I am actually struggling to lift it up because now we've got quite a bit of weight in there. But it's really cool because, of course, we've now got a suitcase we can transport. Bum, ba -bum, bum, ba -bum, bum, and we can throw, uh, drop it here, knock it open, and then slap that in. And then, right, and now we've got a gun. Beautiful absolutely beautiful these things don't explode yet by by gunfire so uh, a little bit of work to do there but, but there you go right and uh, yeah it, it looks great it works nicely and again this is also a slide you can see there's no there's no immediate attachments right like even when it actually goes in it's not immediate i can slide it right out but there we go then it sticks in right it's very very nice it's all very it's all very very nice right i love this new system that i've written for this once it's polished it's going to be so cool oh my goodness it's going to be really really cool but let's get over there we'll have a look at the vending machine because there's more to it right there's more to what we just oh, look. <laughs> we just stored some uh, 
some some cases, some bullet cases. Whoops. Sorry about that, people. Right. Now, what's so cool about this, right? So there's some more cool stuff going on. What's with all these colorful objects? Well, what these are, are in fact different magazines for the same guns. So we're going to need one of those, uh, one of those yellow ones. And this is where the custom listing stuff. So this is very similar to the physical properties stuff that I did in the last video, right? Where nothing, no magazine in where it actually has some more properties to each magazine type and to each bullet type, right? There's a little bit more properties going on. And what they are is different types of magazines that fire different types of bullets. These are the regular magazines, which are the ones that you'll get out from your pocket if you, if you have, if, if, if you get, you use a magazine pocket, right? And then these regular bullets come out of the gun, right? A little bit of a spark there hit the flying bullet. These are the rubber bullets, right? These are toy bullets. And the same with these two uh, colored ones here. There we go. And you can see this gun is not designed to fight. This is a little bit cartoony, but that's fine. I don't want it to be super duper realistic. I just want it to be fun. Um, and this is a little bit cartoony, but it fires these, these, these bullets, right? These are not explosive bullets. These are not being fired by an explosion, by, you know, the, the, the gunpowder. Uh, instead, they are being fired by pneumatic mode, right? So obviously, if you fired them with the proper gun that is designed to fire pneumatics, you get a proper shot, right? And I think I need to go for lunch for dinner now, so I'll be doing that in a moment. But there you go, you now get proper shots coming from this. And it's really cool, in fact, if you grab the regular gun, if you grab the regular bullet magazine and you slap that in the toy gun, and now it's going to use pneumatic shots to fire the toy gun, uh, to fire the real bullet. <laughs> so now you've got the real bullets <laughs> being thrown out, spat out, and they, there's some inaccuracy on purpose, right? You can't fire, these are just absolutely not designed for that. It gets even more beautiful though, right? Uh, you can, of course, use different colored bullets. So there we go, we've got blue ones, we've got red ones, and then we've got we've got this. Now these are actually plasma bullets. Uh, there's still a little bit of, of work to do. I, I want to figure out what should come out of a regular gun if you were to try and fire a plasma shot. Would it just explode in your hand? Probably. Um, but there you go, right? You slap a plasma magazine in and uh, ignore the sound. I'm just using whatever sound effects I've got, right? So there we go. Now I'm firing plasma shots <laughs> from the regular gun. Yeah, so there we go. We've got we've got this uh, this plasma shot, and of course, it's even fun. It, it's even more fun when you slap it into one of these, right? Because then you've got slow moving <laughs> plasma shots. <laughs> Look at that! It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. It's it's much nicer though when you've got one of these, right? So what you want to do is you want to get a plasma magazine for a Mac and now you've got nice little pattern things. <laughs> there we go, plasma being fast. <laughs> it's so absurd, right? You drop that there, plop it into here, and now you've got a plasma firing Mac, right? A plasma firing Uzi. You can see a little bit of trail trouble there, but we'll sort that out later, right? Absolutely beautiful. And of course, these things have their own little uh, rubber bullet mags as well. So again, you can fire those really nice. And I think there is, no, these aren't, these aren't different colored ones. I didn't bother with that, but there we go, right? Um, but there is another type of magazine here as well. So if we take one of these, we've got a nice, uh, nice Glock over here. And of course we've got the regular magazine, right? Fires the regular mag. And then you've got the, the rubber bullets, which fire those. And then you've got the green mag. Now the green mag is really nice because again, this is me just playing around with the possibilities of what this system can do, which is of course that this is going to fire something completely different, a balloon. <laughs> it's the balloon magazine. So there we go. Now we've got um, balloons that are attaching to each other. And that's a bit of a problem by the way. So I'm not going to allow that to happen. You get out of here. There we go. And 
there we go now we've got we've got those balloons once more beautiful and i think that's what the shader is yeah i told you that shader was not very performant you can see now it's actually hitting my frame rate again yeah i need to i need to sort that problem out but there we go now we've got balloons and they are actually causing this thing to be pulled up it's beautiful and of course we can just get the other magazine out there knock those out you got lots of confetti there beautiful absolutely oh i've already got a gun <laughs> absolutely beautiful but there we go now we can actually shoot some uh, some no i don't want one of those um now we can actually shoot and we've got a nice uh, pink magazine here same thing again there we go we can shoot some targets out beautiful so now we just take a gun we can and of course i, re I really want to show this off so we've got the old uh, we got a gun we've got a magazine in our packet we slap it Ooh, try that again we slap it in throw that flip flop and then fire at these balloons be a loons beautiful we slap that down on the floor and we can do it all with one hand right so one hand on the table the other hand slap the gun in flip flop flippity dot beautiful <laughs> i love it i am going to put a cut here i don't think there's anything left to to talk about but we'll uh, we'll cover everything um just to make sure I'll, I'll go through everything here uh again but i think that's the end of this video it's absurd but there we go uh, there is of course a little magazine cleanup box here you can just put it in and throw that it's time for me to go i'll see you guys in the next video um uh, bye 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 bye